Hey friends, thanks for watching. I'm sharing with you today two easy and healthy dinner ideas for you to make for your family, a lasagna with gluten-free pasta and a really easy shrimp stir fry. I'm also including a what's for dessert. These chocolate chip cookies are to die for. Hit the like button if you enjoy this video and please consider subscribing if you're new. Let's get cooking. So the first recipe that I'm sharing with you is this really easy lasagna recipe. I just happen to be using gluten-free noodles, but you could use regular lasagna noodles for this as well. You only need a few ingredients, Parmesan, mozzarella, and ricotta cheese, an onion, one egg, some minced garlic, ground beef, your pasta of choice, and your pasta sauce of choice. I just used whatever I could get from the grocery store at that time. I went ahead and preheated my oven to 350 and got some oil heating in the pan. And then I'm starting out by cutting up my onions. That way it is ready to toss in the pan with my ground beef. The next thing I'm doing is putting the ground beef in the pan and just making sure that it's all chopped up and then I'm going to add my onions to that and my minced garlic so that all of those flavors can mix with the meat. The next part of this recipe doesn't have exact measurements, but I use somewhere around 15 ounces of ricotta cheese in this bowl. I went ahead and cracked the egg in the bowl as well, and then added somewhere between a cup to a cup and a half of mozzarella cheese and about half of a cup of Parmesan cheese. Of course, you could change these ratios depending on which cheeses you prefer more, and this is going to be the middle filling for our lasagna. I will of course leave all of these recipes linked in the description box below, but of course feel free to tweak them for your family. Again, if you want to use different meat or you want to use different ratios of cheese, different spices or seasonings, you are welcome to do so. Gluten-free pasta, regular pasta, it's really up to you. It's why I love cooking so much is you get to really be creative. I tweak this recipe to be a little bit smaller than a 13 by nine pan. I find that that's way too much lasagna for just two people. So I use only about three quarters of a jar of marinara or pasta sauce here. And you can add more if you like your sauce a little runnier or if you like your meat sauce a little bit chunkier, then use less. Now we are going to assemble our lasagna. Pretty easy, you start by adding your meat sauce to the bottom of the pan and then layering your lasagna noodles on top. I was able to fit three lasagna noodles on top of the sauce perfectly in the entire pan, which was such a win. And then on top of that, you're just going to spoon the ricotta cheese mixture, make sure that it is covering the noodles and then keep repeating the layers until you get to the top. Please take a minute to hit the like button if you are enjoying this video. And if you have not already subscribed, please consider doing so so you can join our community that we have here on YouTube. I post videos twice a week on Tuesdays and on Fridays.
I'm using whatever cheese I have remaining to add to the top of the lasagna, a little bit of mozzarella and Parmesan mixed together. And then I'm going to take some tin foil and make sure that it is very tightly covered around all the edges. You don't want your sauce accidentally leaking and bubbling out of the pan while it is in the oven. And then I'm going to pop it in the oven for about 40 minutes. And then I take the tin foil off and cook it with the foil off for another 10 minutes. And this is what it looks like when it is all done. You can still see that it is bubbling here. It was so delicious. Delicious. And of course, we had to pair it with some garlic breadsticks because what else would you have with lasagna? So the next recipe I'm sharing with you guys is an easy shrimp stir fry and this is one of my favorites because the ingredients that go in it are completely up to you. I decided to use what I had on hand which was carrots, onion, bell pepper, and broccoli and then I used a interesting combination of all of these ingredients that you see here to make the sauce and again I didn't really stick to any particular recipe, I just kind of made it up so I will let you know the ratios as we go along. I'm starting out by rinsing off my shrimp. I had these jumbo peeled shrimp and I just gave them a quick rinse and then I'm getting to cutting up all of my veggies next. I would say that if you're going to use carrots for a stir fry recipe that you not use baby carrots. This was all I had, but it was very difficult to grate these carrots because they were so tiny. I ended up grating about half the carrot and then eating the other half, but we made it through and this was a really nice addition that I don't normally add to stir fry, but again, you could add whatever you have in your refrigerator at the time. I just put a little bit of water in with this broccoli just to steam it up before I add it to the pan. Wanted to make sure that it was a little bit al dente. And now I'm working on my sauce, so I will leave all of the ratios to this sauce in the description box since they are a little bit different than you might find in a regular recipe. I did somewhere around a quarter of a cup of soy sauce. I use low sodium soy sauce, about two tablespoons of sesame oil, and then I would say this is probably about two tablespoons of honey. You could add more or less depending on how sweet you want your sauce to be. I found that the sweeter, the better. Then I added about a tablespoon of minced garlic and I did the same thing with the minced ginger here. The ginger was a really nice addition that I don't normally think of adding to different dishes. And then to thicken it up, I added about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of cornstarch. This just helps to thicken the sauce up while it is cooking in the pan. And then the tomato ketchup was a great addition as well. I probably used one tablespoon of this and the vinegar gave it a nice kick. I just mix all of these things together and then we are ready to start cooking things in the pan. While the veggies were cooking, I went ahead and boiled some rice. I use the boil in a bag rice, add four cups of water, and this cooks for about 10 minutes and is a super easy cleanup because the mess stays in the bag. I'm adding the shrimp now and then I'm going to add the sauce and let this sit for a little bit and get nice and thick and bubbly. While everything was finishing up cooking, I decided to pour myself a glass of wine. This wine was kindly sent to me by a company called Wink. If you guys don't know about Wink, they are a wine delivery service. I will have my link in the description box for you to get $22 off your first order through Wink and paying no extra for shipping. 
Now I'm going to plate all of my food and this is what it looked like when it was done. Guys, this was so delicious, super easy to make and it really made for great leftovers. During this quarantine, it was like getting Chinese takeout without having to leave my house. My bonus recipe that I'm sharing with you guys today are these delicious chocolate chip cookies. I'm just setting my oven to 350 and getting my cookie sheet out. You only need a few ingredients to make these cookies. A couple sticks of butter, two eggs, baking powder, vanilla extract, of course chocolate chips, and then you need flour, regular sugar, and brown sugar. The brown sugar, I think, is what really makes these cookies extra moist and extra sweet. I'm just gonna start out by adding my butter directly to the bowl, then I'm gonna add all of my sugars to this so that I can beat it with my beaters. You will notice that I do have a hand mixer. I don't have a stand mixer, so it is a little bit more work to make something like this, but it is a great workout for your arm. I don't know if you guys noticed that I really packed in that brown sugar. That is the key to making sure that you get one full cup of brown sugar. And then here you can see I'm starting to beat those ingredients together. I'm gonna do the same thing with the eggs and the vanilla extract. And then I'm gonna beat the mixture after I add each ingredient. You really wanna make sure that all of that sugar gets nice and dissolved and you have a very creamy mixture at the end. The dry ingredients is by far the easiest part of this entire thing. You're only using three cups of regular flour, adding some baking powder and a dash of salt, mixing those things together and to make sure that everything is really well combined. So you wanna add just a little bit of the dry mixture to the wet at a time. Otherwise, when you turn on your beaters, you're gonna have flour all over your kitchen. So definitely take at least three or four stops to turn off the beaters and add a little bit more, making sure that as you are going, you are scraping the sides of the bowl to make sure everything is mixed in really well. The recipe calls for two cups of chocolate chips, but of course you could add more or less depending on how many chocolate chips you want in your cookies. And then I'm gonna use this cookie scoop here to just make sure that each one of my cookies is the exact same size. This is a two tablespoon cookie scoop. You could use a one tablespoon or a bigger one depending on how large or how small you like your cookies. I set the timer for 12 minutes and this is what they look like when they came out. They were so moist and delicious. Guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Consider subscribing to my channel if you are new here. I would love to have you and I will see you guys again really soon in a brand new video. Bye guys.